Welcome to The Hump. This week we're talking about timing. (laughs) And I'd like to welcome the panel, the beautiful Sophie. Oh, thank you. The radiant Meg and this guy. (laughs) <laughs> um, hi Julius, how are you? Shalom. Lovely to have you here Thank as you. always. Okay, let's have a look at the news. Operating in 75 venues with around 700 staff across Australia and New Zealand, Staging Connections Group have just announced closure of their Melbourne and Perth offices. Instead, they're redeploying equipment into venues, saying that the overheads are too high and it's more efficient. The changes mean that 10 staff in Melbourne and four in Perth have been retrenched, which is always sad. Okay, gang, this week we are talking about timing. Mm. In this business, it is everything. It is mm. crucial. Very, very yes. important. I'd like to say I'm going to out myself as the worst timing I ever had. Uh, it was, I was actually a, like an on-stage tech. It was this huge stadium gig, bizarrely, for a private school, but there we go. They had an orchestra complete set. We had to put, like, put the whole orchestra on stage while somebody was talking and like mic it all up, and they were going to do the 1812 overture. Ooh, you know, with and the cannons. That always happens with the cannons and the explosions, and orchestras try and do it with fireworks, and every single time, and I've asked around, someone has worked on this, it always goes wrong. Now, it went wrong because we had to put a whole orchestra on the stage and then check that everything was working. So basically, I was on stage with the comms going, okay, is this mic on? Scratching it, and the, the front of house guy had cans on and was you know, just listening to it so it didn't come through the PA, making sure it was muted, so he made sure it was muted, scratch, scratch, it's working, next one, make sure it's muted, scratch, scratch. Get to the sampler that's gonna do the explosions, which are very, very loud, and I'm like, okay, so is it muted, is it muted, is it muted? Bang! (laughs) The PA, these huge explosions went off while they were introducing Oh. The, um, so I'd blown all their powder and um, yeah. and then yeah, yeah. then I hear a quiet voice from my boss in my ear going, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> thinking, my employment here is tenuous. You, you yeah. blew your load. Josh. I blew it. I blew everybody. You went early, mate. So my timing was off. My timing was terrible. Oh. I, um, I don't have that sort of thing, but I always, always run into a really good girlfriend of mine who is a fashion stylist mm-hmm. when I'm looking in like I've just been <laughs> dragged <laughs> through, I've been tunneled backwards and yeah. Yeah, yeah, it always happens. You're actually always statistically more likely to run in an, into an ex when you look like that too. Yeah, that's mm. kind of happened. As well. <laughs> so yeah, so I just make sure that it's dark glasses these days, you know, mm. celebrity that I'm not. Mm. Yep, bad timing. <laughs> All the time. Okay, I believe you have a, a horror timing story. Ah, Barry Crocker. <laughs> it's a Barry Crocker. It's actually synonymous with a It's a Crocker. Right? He uh, had a cassette <laughs> routine. Oh, I love so the audition. So the offstage voice is on the cassette. Good morning, Barrington. What are you here for? <laughs> oh, I'm here for the audition. So the problem is there were three seconds between offstage voice segments. So you had to let it roll. One and two and three. Pause. Yep. There's no way yeah. you can do comic timing on a piece of tape. With a cassette. Yeah. No, that's actually impossible. And to compound it, he also had a, a film projector and a reel-to-reel. So the guy was just... <laughs> oh, my God. He was, was, out, to get me. He was yeah, out to no, get He was out to get No, he was setting you up to fail. Then. Oh, and I failed. And <laughs> <laughs> As was designed into the system. Totally. Are you okay? This was Are probably okay? a while ago. I know, but I don't think he's over it. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, if you're watching, we're calling you out, mate. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love you, Barry. Not yes, yes. We're I'll not always going to get timing right, are we? But when you get it right, oh, it's a oh thing. doesn't it feel good? It's a great and wonderful thing. Oh, mm. yes. No, I really, I've seen a few comedy shows lately where the, the person operating the show was as much a part of the show as the, as the person on mm. stage. And I, I, yeah, really got to give it up to those technicians. A lot of respect, really yeah, heavy yeah. audio, lots of lighting, blackouts that had to be in the right place. Oh, well, remember, yeah. hey, hey, it's Saturday and Murray Tregoning's sound effects, they were always perfectly timed. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I admire anybody who can really, really nail it because that mm. really makes it work. 
So, yeah. We'll be right back after this. Metallica being from the Bay Area, especially myself, like to hook up with people who are local. Needing a smaller wedge for travel reasons, still keeping the same sonics of the giant Metallica sound was a challenge, but not for Meyer, it seems. Very pleased with uh, you know, the duties of guitar and vocals uh, coming through the same wedges, needing to have clarity in both, and this is, this is what happens with Meyer, so. Sound's self-powered MJF-208 stage monitor incorporates the features of the MJF-212A and the MJF-210 into a smaller lightweight package. Each MJF-208 measures less than 33 centimetres high and weighs 20 kilos. The monitor delivers impressive power to size ratio and very low distortion in a small footprint lightweight option for applications that do not demand the extreme output levels of the MJF-210 or 212A. Portability and ease of use for the MJF-208 are enhanced by the MDM-832 distribution module, which can route up to eight channels of AC power, balanced audio and RMS monitoring data to multiple stage monitors. Jace, I've been looking forward to your special reports. Do you have another? Oh, I certainly do, Sophie. In Theatre News, director Simon Smith's artistic vision for the Ku Wee Rup Amateur Dramatical Society's production of Les Miserables is completely within budget and easily achievable in the limited time frame the theatre has to bump in and tech the show. Dave Rack of Dry Hire Company Rack Stacks, who provide the group with production each year, commented, I can't believe it. They're usually asking for 32 channels of radios, a line array and a Digico D5 for 500 bucks. There must be something wrong with this guy. Theatre head mech Sarah Knotts is equally sceptical, stating that he doesn't want to revolve and isn't even trying to replicate that bit when the two bits of barricade spin around. He's doing everything with simple props, lighting and clever direction. He is clearly a madman and must be stopped. Good old amateur theatre. You can just do whatever you like because it's amateur. <laughs> uh, have you have you encountered the the crazed part time director and yeah. like possibly school productions and with ideas that are they take fanciful? their jobs very very oh, seriously. They love it, and you can make movies about these guys. It's brilliant. Oh, have you ever seen um, oh, what is it? Uh, Waiting for Government. It's no, a movie. No. It's a movie about an amateur theatre company. It's just really if you have anybody who's worked with near amateur theatre, yep. go out find this movie. It is very. Very funny. Mm, yeah, highly, highly see. recommended. But you know, I mean, you could actually just film the real thing and it would just be as funny. <laughs> very serious. <laughs> very, very serious. Uh, all right, so let's have a look at what's in the gearbox this week. Sennheiser's Team Connect wireless system. Now, this case actually also functions as a charger. You can see the electrical cable coming out here. And this is what you get when you open this gorgeous little thing up. Ooh, look now, at that. The Let's just say the industrial design of this thing is gorgeous. Yeah. They're, they're not cheap, but they are beautifully presented. Now, what is this all about? Well, here we go. We have these little thingies. Oh, look, lights up. And it does. It all lights up. Now, the whole point of this, this is a portable wireless teleconferencing set, enabled to be deployed anywhere you want to have a teleconference. Now, you can connect via a number of ways. I'm just going to connect to this thing via Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Connecty connect. This is the master unit. Uh, sorry, I have to just turn on the Bluetooth which you just press. There's a series of very simple icons on the top. The other point of this is that it's anybody should be able to use it. Yeah. I have connected you have. on Look, my phone. Yeah. Now, Julius, if you would, could you please call my telephone? Certainly. Did we have a good time? I think we did, panel. <laughs> it's been rich and real. And, you know, with great timing, I think it's our time to get out of here. Okay. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.